Hello, Planet Sewers. It's Mathlete here with another episode from the Houston Zoo series I'm working on. Today I am bringing you the start of the natural encounters with the capuchin monkeys as the first exhibit. I forgot to record the building of the structure that's going to house them on the inside and the outside, but I just did a rough sketch of the building, so to speak, with walls looking at Google Earth from the aerial view to get a feel for how the building is laid out. And I used the billboards to create that mural you see on the wall there. So just going around and adding the building pieces all the way. Some of this will get removed as I make decisions based off of what it looks like in real life and how it translates into the game. Setting the barriers down for the outside part of this enclosure as you walk up on it uh, in the real zoo. They have tiny little black monkeys, I can't remember what they're called, on the outside. And then on the inside, they actually have more different small monkeys and some birds and even a sloth. But those aren't in the game, so I decided to go with the capuchin monkey and give them an inside and an outside area to play in. And right here I am changing this out because I realized that the wood is climbable so therefore it would make the enclosure escapable so I just use those as a guide and replace them with metal pieces that are not climbable. The outside section is a little bit bigger than it actually is in the Houston Zoo. I needed to be able to fit all the monkeys and fit the things inside so the scale of the building is a little bit bigger than it is in real life. So going through and just changing all those out so that my monkeys are not going to escape on those climbable beams. And I did not want to group them in. It would make it harder to delete the beams, which I edit that part out. Adding in some structures here so that it actually will look like it contains little animals that climb. And doing them in a little group here, sliding them over. And then that side's not gonna fit. The smallest piece was two meters. So I just decided I'll just spin that one over so till it hides and then adjust the rest to fit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing across the top. As I was building this section, I haven't corrected it yet, but I will between this episode and the next one, I noticed that the path cover is actually a little bit larger than it is in real life and also encroaches upon the building quite a bit. So I think I'm going to adjust that path cover so that it is not right up onto the building and that way there's a better view of it from the ground for one reason, and also the second reason being it looks like from the Google Earth images when I looked around from different angles that it actually is a little bit smaller than how I built it. So I'll fix that between this episode and next episode. So this episode I am just doing the capuchin monkeys and so when we do our walkthrough towards the end it will be a lot of open spaces. I won't have everything completed yet. There's a lot of detail and rock work that's going to go into this build. So I just focused on making this habitat and the viewing side from the inside. Because like I said before, there is an inside viewing and an outside viewing. So there's multiple places that they can look at the monkeys so as they come in down the path or as they go into the building, there's glass there. And then once they go inside, they'll also have an opportunity to see the monkeys. I wish there was a better way to duplicate things sometimes. I wish I could have just flopped this right over, but it, it was a struggle to get it to fit so it would be the same as the other side. So I just adjusted those few pieces that were giving me trouble. And I really wanted four in that spacing, but it didn't look like it was going to work out. So I was measuring, I was using another piece here to try to get a nice even feel and then I realized 
Well, that's not going to work either. So I'm just going to use it to space those three and then scoot them over so that they look like they're all the same distance. And for some reason with a lot of pieces, when you select more than one, it will change the directional arrows with advanced move and it no longer stays in line with the piece. It kind of goes off the center. It drives me batty. So a lot of that I had to do one by one before I slid them over. I was actually a little bit sad when I was comparing Google Earth to the actual visit I did at the zoo uh, last weekend. Right here next to the monkeys that I'm building, they used to have the red pandas. And when I saw that in Google Earth, I was so excited because we do have red pandas in the game. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm building right there. That's going to be great. I love red pandas. And when I actually visited the zoo, the red pandas are not there anymore. They've torn that down and they're building something else right there. They've actually moved a temporary building. It's more like one of those party tents for the strollers over there. So I think eventually I will update the zoo to reflect some of those changes that they're making. However, right now I'm gonna focus on going this direction with the natural encounter building. There is a natural garden in the back of this and to the right there is a reptile house and behind all of that is elephants. So I'm going to do the natural encounter building and do the interior and I think the next one I'm going to do is just the exterior for the reptile house so I have the space laid out. Um, then I'm going to do the elephant habitats and then go back to do the inside of the reptile house. I don't know, let me know what you think, what order I should go in or should I finish out the reptile house. I just really didn't want to do two house style builds back to back. I felt like I needed more animal builds because the game is about animals, not just buildings. And the exhibits in the game are super large compared to what they actually are in real life. So what I'm doing here is creating the interior part for the capuchin monkey um, habitat. Trying out a couple of different ideas. Now this habitat in the actual zoo doesn't quite go that far over. I'm, I think I'm going to keep it this way, but we'll see how it goes as I build out the interior. There are several challenges that are going to be a part of building the interior of this building. Um, there is a mole exhibit for regular moles and naked moles. There are several natural stream-like uh, river aquariums that house several different things you would see uh, in the United States, mostly in Texas. So they have big catfish, um, some small stingrays, things of that nature. So I'm going to have to get really creative in putting those things in here. I'm looking forward to the challenge and seeing how well I can replicate and express the different things that they have on display inside this building. I think um, from my visit of last weekend that I had at the zoo, this was one of my favorite buildings to go into with all the different things that they had uh, as far as interests and the way that they had it designed. So I'm sinking in these trees. They would be sticking out of the ceiling if I left them the way they were. So just dropping them down in to give these capuchin monkeys some screening if they need it. Lots of things to climb on. I do put quite a few monkeys in here. I've already got some in. I wanted to be able to check their traversable areas as I build. I knew that I wanted them to be able to go in and out through that top space right there in the building. And I wanted a little water feature inside as well. In the actual zoo, they do have some water in there, um, but the wood feature that I'm building here is a little different than what's in the exhibit. They actually have like a path that's ground level, but I wanted to give the monkeys a way to get in and out and 
a nice looking little bridge here instead of everything on the floor and on the ground. Uh, my son said at one time you could actually walk on that path into that little area but then they changed it and closed it where you cannot do that anymore. Not sure why they made that change but I did want to make sure the monkeys had access to water from both areas of their habitat as well as giving guests a good view of them from both sides with the climbing pieces that are included here. And I was super excited as I turned the game on as I start building later to check a couple of things to watch them really use all these things that I put together for them. I think that's the greatest feeling is to get to see them actually use what you're putting in the habitats for them. Some of the items to give them a little bit of a glitch. I think because I've sunk those trees into the ground, I noticed a couple of funny animations because they're still crawling, but they're not going in the ground or climbing. It was actually really entertaining. So I'm hoping that I can complete this building in maybe two or three episodes. Again, let me know after I finish this building if you feel like I should continue and just do the reptile house before I do the elephants or if I should attempt the elephants without building the reptile house or um, build the outside of the reptile house and then do the elephants and then go back to the reptile house. Let me know what you think and uh, I will take that into my considerations for moving forward once we get through with this building here. And I, I really like how that backdrop came out for this. It's just a repeating stock image, um, like a background for a website, so that when you put the billboards side by side, it will create a seamless pattern. So it's um, several billboards that are four by four, and I have snap turned on when I place them so that they will line up directly. And then here I notice my trees are still too tall so I'm going to drop them back down and I've got my archer there. I wanted that platform to be at eye level for my guests. This part was a real challenge and um, when I was looking at the Google Earth images they do have it's actually fully round right here however I wanted it to be a little bit bigger to bring some light into that habitat and as I was looking at how this comes together with the other pieces I could tell I don't have a piece to fill in around that curve and that square from the concrete pieces. And I tried several things here as well and just went with the flat roof to close in that little area for that gap. And I think I forgot to do it on the other side, I'm not sure. Um, no, I, I didn't need to because it doesn't have a curve. I'm silly. The only curve is right here. But I do wish that there was a piece in the game that would hug up against those as a floor or a roof. It's a little frustrating with those curved pieces. You have the ones that will fit from the inside, but not from an outside perspective. And I already have an escaped monkey, and I'm fixing a couple of things over there. Every time I load into the game, the seals complain. It takes away their diveable water and I'm moving this so that my monkeys hopefully won't accidentally escape through their climbing functions and uh, anyway on the seals I do have to move a pillar every time I load the game so that it will reset the water it's a little frustrating and trying to give my keeper some access to the outside area and then I realize I have to take that door away um, they can't go through it, which is odd, inside the habitat. According to the, um, the heat map for staff members, when I put the door there, it all goes gray on the outside. I really wanted to kind of keep that look of the uh, mural there, but unfortunately there was really no way to put a door in. They wouldn't walk through the mural. Um, so I just went with that on the end because in the actual zoo you can see where they've painted the mural 
over the door, which is really cool. And putting in the guardrail here so that guests don't get too close. I wish there was a little bit smaller of a bush, but that was the smallest one I could find that wouldn't upset the monkeys with their terrain. Adding a few more enrichments in for them. And that ball immediately fell down. And out here, I am building a box for the monkeys uh, as kind of a hanging bed. And I tried to do it in the habitat, but it was just too hard for me to see, so I decided to go out on the path to get it nice and flat and straight. I tried using the wall in here, and then when I started flipping things around, they weren't lining up. It was really odd. And the smallest bedding didn't quite fit in it, so I'm just going to extend it all the way out and put that back. Moving it to the height that I want it for this side of the habitat. Sorry about the camera. That was a little wonky. And I was super excited because as soon as I got it there, the monkeys were jumping in it. So it, I was like, oh yay, hopefully they'll use it. I haven't seen any monkeys actually sleep in it. I've just seen them run through it and climb all around it. Maybe it's because of the amount of ropes I put on it. Maybe I should take all the ones in the middle off, but I wanted to cover it up in ropes instead of just having a board up there. And I'm going to duplicate this guy over, but hang it a little bit lower on the other side so that it's more at the view of the guests. But the monkeys were just loving that thing. They were climbing all over it when I was building it. But unfortunately, when I did my walkthrough, I barely caught one monkey using it to get around. But the monkeys kept getting boxed because I was building that and they were trying to run through it. And I would put things down and I did it over here too. And it would box them as I was changing the path for them. And I was trying different path ideas here to get these to connect. Finishing off this side of the building a little bit so that it's not just wide open and at least close off this area where the monkeys are and get everything to one level on the outside of the building. And then right there I had to separate one from the group and move it in so that it would connect and I tried a couple of different things. I was just going to use the brick barrier, but if I raise up the barrier in here, it was raising up other posts or not going through the building well. So I ended up using the wall and moving that null barrier out. Now for this, it does trigger escapes as they climb up and through that little area that I created for them. And I just left it that way. They're not considered a dangerous animal, so it doesn't really matter. Once they get back below the barrier heights, the trigger goes away. So since they're not considered dangerous, the guests don't run off. I could put, I guess, a null barrier all the way around and mark it as my barrier perimeter and then turn the barrier perimeter off on the inside sections. Um, or just take them away, really, and just raise it up. Because I think I have mostly null barriers, but I do have that gate, so the gate one, I would have to turn it off on. And as you come into the building, um, they do have a really neat entrance to this building, and on the roof, um, there's this skylight. So that's what I'm building here. This part of the skylight was pretty simple to, to create. The second part was a little more difficult and I'm placing in these etchings. They actually have some wildlife areas like trees and grass and not as many animals um, etched into the glass as you come in. Since the game doesn't have that, I just re represented that um, design with these guys here and I should have made that decision to flip them before placing them down. It made it a little hard to grab them. And then I end up moving this whole piece forward um, when I check my reference picture. And that's actually on the front part, not on the inside. But I didn't show that because getting all of that selected, I had to get really close. 
and not select other things. So now it's been moved and I'm adding in what it looks like as I check Google Earth. It was a little bit different than what I remembered so I swapped it around and I really don't like the top of that brick having that white so I put that pillar on it to cover up the white top of the brick and I redid this a couple of times it has a really interesting angle and I was just struggling for some reason in my mind with how this should move around um, the roof comes in at an angle and goes into the building and then arrows up and out so I redid this a few times as I tried to figure out what pieces I needed and what direction so a couple of times I had things the wrong way and then right here there's a little bit of an opening I was thinking that well how am I gonna cover that up but I do that part after I finish the roof originally for this part I made a 4x4 cube of these and when I went to go put this up here I thought to myself well what if I just use that piece but don't cover up the top and see what that looks like and then go from there so using one by one when I tried to group them the arrows don't keep their relationship as you can see right here and it is a struggle to get them to line up. I could have done them all one by one, but I decided once I had the big group, I would move those um, and duplicate them. It's a little easier than just the little ones over and over again. So just trying to get those to line up on the edges, moving it back and forth. It took a lot of fine movements. I tried changing it to the world axis, but and that didn't help either so either way I had to just do this nudge by nudge and right here is where I really decided I needed to probably fix my path I, like I said I just haven't done it yet that path cover right there you can't see the roof line of this building and then when I check the images the path cover doesn't come right up on it the way I have this done and I think I finally have it and then I decide I do need to add one more I think I'm highlighting the whole thing here nope just one more just a little bit to get over on the edge and then I'm gonna add another set right over here because that side had more of a dramatic coverage with the roof and I didn't put them up here yet um, but they do have little animals um, the game doesn't have any bats but they have a bat hanging off of here and then they have a couple of statue animals on the roof part of it so I may go back and see what animals I can add to it for that flare that they have as you walk in here so I'll double check that and if I add them I will point them out in the next episode and I was looking through to see if there was a different piece I could maybe use here. I wasn't too happy with that glass overlap, but I just left it that way. You can't, you can't really see it until you get right up on it. And then I wanted to cover it up just a little bit with these pieces so that it would provide a little bit more shade as they walked in. Um, in the actual image, the whole roof is solid. I, I just went with my own flair here with what was available in the game instead of covering that up I don't really have a metal piece that's going to match that square so I just went for that contemporary art look and put that in there originally I was going to cover the whole thing and then as I duplicated this one over I decided I think I would just keep it in the middle so I'm going to scoot this one to match the other one and I had a little more struggle getting that one into place checking it from the inside and I set this down so that I could keep my rocks level to that little piece I didn't like any of the available wall pieces here so I just created my own with some aquatic rocks and duplicating this over to get the rock work started as you walk in they do have little small rocks 
but we don't have those in the game. I guess I could have used the aquatic stair, but I would have probably been there all day doing little tiny rocks. But they had like flagstone style rocks that they used here, but this will do. I'm getting those just where I want them and getting rid of some extras as I duplicated. And then just going to copy that right over there. And I brought Ruby out of her sleepy cage. She was screaming her head off and the microphone was picking it up. So hopefully she will maintain her noise level. But if you do hear her purr in the background, you can just say hi to Ruby. But I will edit out any screeches. She likes to screech. So I'm making a little planter on this side. And I'll find some mulch, and then I'm bringing the mulch level up a little higher and add in some palmy trees. And I can see to the left on the inside, I totally forgot to remove a little group of those stones. So they will be in the walkthrough. I, I went back and deleted them after this. And so there is the sign I'm putting in. I thought it said, nature encounters and then when I look back at my image I had to change it so trying to figure out how I want to space this between the breaks they have in this glass wall I didn't want to create custom walls here I just went with the in-game ones as I had created the top of that enclosure there in the rock work and I know that there's gonna be a lot that goes into this building rock work wise and they have a lot of fake trees in here. So I went with this aquatic tree root and I will fill it out in the next build. They keep try to get the feel that you're walking through a forest as you go through this, like a river forest area. So I'm setting that foundation right here. Um, right here they have a little kind of guest welcoming area with a sink. And a, and a screen. I'm not sure what they use it for. It might be like an animal talk area. Um, I noticed in the Google pictures they had times for different things, but they were not doing that when I visited the zoo. But they do have a space there. It's blocked off with a sink. So I will add that in the next episode. Finishing off the rock work around here. And I believe when I finish this rock work, we are going to take a little tour of what I've completed so far. I'm not going to put any floors in until I get a little closer to getting finished. It depends on what all I need to cover up. And there's a lot of details that go into this interior. So I didn't want to bother with floors just yet. And I only did the ceiling for this one little area, mostly because I knew it would be hard with that curved glass top that was going on up there. Looking for some different pieces, I wanted to put in some little signs here um, that resemble kind of what they have when you do walk through here. They have a lot of etched glass signs with little information panels and lights on them. And unfortunately, I don't think that these will count for education. It's just advertising. So making sure that I still do have some education for them. And here we are at the beginning of the zoo. And there's the guy I selected to walk around as. He's all highlighted and off he goes. And let's see here. I'm struggling to get started. I was having some key issues on getting my hand aligned. Then I struggle with speed as well. I need not slow as a snail and not fast as a rabbit. I need somewhere in the middle. But anyway, I didn't change anything in this part of the zoo yet. I'm still kind of deciding how I want to navigate the entry plaza. And when I did my first walkthrough, I zoomed right by all this. So I, I edited that out because I backed up and was like, oh yeah, this is what we're supposed to be looking at. So here it is, the outside part. So again, I feel like this path right there just overshadows everything a little bit on the cover. So I will fix that. 
and back it up a little bit. And there's some capuchin monkeys right there running around, getting in the tall grass. And there's a group of people standing here and they're really enjoying watching the monkeys from this side. Ever since I put the monkeys in, there's a lot of traffic on this side of the zoo now. And here we are at the Natural Encounters entrance. So I've got the etched animals up there to represent the etching that they have on the original building. And I just put those monkeys on the side so that, that it would balance out since it wasn't quite centerable. It wasn't pleasing to my eye. And can't see any monkeys right here. When we went to the zoo, one screamed through the glass so loud. He was so tiny and he had the biggest scream. And we'll just ignore that this isn't completed yet, but that's where that sink goes and a TV screen. And right there is the start of a little river area that had several different aquatic things like fish and a stingray. And we're gonna come around at this side and get a look at the capuchin monkey habitat from the inside viewing area from the guest perspective. And I can see several right there. And we'll come around to the other side, see what we can see. But I didn't wanna put the big huge billboards everywhere or the education boards. I wanted those little small ones. And I see the ball rolling. There's one getting a drink of water. Oh, now you can't see him. Let's go in the habitat, take a look around. We've got their food enrichment over here. I see two there. There's two sleeping. And let's see what's up here. Oh, there goes one running down. So this is the view of the people from inside the habitat. And let's take a look from this platform. And you can see the monkeys just really love this area. They like to run back and forth, up and down the vines, and they jump around from the trees, and they jump into that rope sleep hammock that I made for them. And sometimes they glitch jump through a couple things. It's kind of funny, but that's why that doesn't meet right there. I had to back it away from the glass. They were jumping and escaping through it that way. And I see there's a piece of glass there that I need to delete that somehow got set down. Sometimes I hit the wrong button and set things in weird places. Oh, there goes a monkey in the hammock. Cute. Off he goes. And there goes one outside. So let's follow a monkey. Let's see how they interact with everything. Let's see where this one's going to go. And he's going outside. And he's on a outside thing. Oh, I never finished my um, bridge I was going to build for them out there. I got distracted. Well, I'll have to build that. I don't know. Maybe I'll just take it out and leave the vines. If you have an opinion, let me know. I'm not sure how I want to do that. Here goes one. Looks like he's going to take a nap. All right. Thank you so much for watching my video today. The next episode will be out on Sunday as usual for the Houston Zoo. And I will have a Tuesday and a Thursday upload as well. So again, thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. And may the RNG odds be ever in your favor.